60 mortgage solutions. So today I'm going to be looking at valuations and more, more specifically, what are the five types of valuations there are available? So you might be asking yourself, are valuations even important? And the answer is absolutely. So a valuation report can have things in it, which mean that a bank or lender will not lend against that property or that they'll cap how much they can lend. And obviously it also puts a value on the property, which you want that value to be as high as possible so you can borrow as much as possible without paying any lender's mortgage insurance. So firstly, we're gonna look at the five different types of valuations, but I want you to make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the follow-up follow -up video, which will go through what are the things that you can do to make sure you get the best outcome for your valuation on your property. So make sure you hit the subscribe button now or at the end of the video. So let's look at what the five different valuations are. The first one is an automated valuation. So an automated valuation is pretty much a computer database that looks at all the recent sales in the area for a property that is very similar to yours. Same number of bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. So it will then give an estimate range of what your property is worth. Now this isn't a very common valuation because it's not very specific, but it definitely gives you an idea. If you purchased your property, say 10 years ago, it's a great report to have to give you an estimate on what your property might be worth given recent sales in the area. The second one is a desktop valuation. So a desktop valuation is really similar to an automated valuation, except rather than it just being a generic report, an actual valuer will do the report up. So they will gather the data and it will be a lot more specific. So this one is generally only used if the loan amount you're looking to borrow is 80% or less, because, because there's a variance in the price range, if they get it a bit short, it won't affect the bank or lender too much. So it's not a really common one. Probably the most common one is a short form valuation. So a short form valuation is where they will actually go to the property, a valuer will go to the property, look around the outside of the property and go through the inside of the property to work out what its current state is in, is it in excellent condition, poor condition, etc. They'll also have a look for things like structural damage or evidence of termites so that they can report that on the, on the actual report as well. And just like the other valuations, they'll go back to the office, have a look at the recent sales in the area and use all of that data together to give an actual value to your property. Generally, you find that these values are quite conservative and that's because a bank or lender is looking to lend against them. So the valuer will, will look at the more conservative side and, and not so much what your property could sell for on the market today. There's another type of valuation and this is called a curbside valuation. And this is typically used for properties that are vacant blocks of land. So this is where the valuer will already have a good idea of what the value is worth by using recent sales in the area and, and the data on, on the internet. And then they'll actually drive out to the property and just have a look at it, look at its street appeal, etc. And then they'll compose the, the valuation report based on what they've seen. And then finally, there's the as if complete valuation. So the as if complete valuation is where you're building a property or doing some major renovations. And this is where you'll submit absolutely everything that you're doing to the valuer. So right up to what the type of sink you're putting in your kitchen, uh, what type of light fixtures, what type of front door you're gonna use. Um, and then they will use all that information to determine what the value of the property will be once it's been built. So there you have five different types of valuations. And you can see just by looking at what they are, there's really different things that you can do to make sure that you get the best outcome depending on which valuation you've got. So I'm gonna go through that in the next video. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. But otherwise, until then, if you've got any questions or concerns, please pop them in the comments below and I'd be happy to get back to you.